Eternal Father, we thank you for this opportunity. May you give us understanding, we beseech you. Amen. UK inflation hit 9%, starvation in United Kingdom, and the close of probation. I want to welcome you all in a very special way to the Herald Report YouTube ministry today. My name is Kudzai Gogora. We are focusing on a very wonderful topic today as we assess the trend of what is happening at the moment, looking at the economical situation and how we are going to be managing and also focusing on the close of probation. We have learned from the book Testimonies, Volume 9, page 11, it says, We are living in the time of the end. My brothers and sisters, there is no reverse anymore. We are now right towards the end. The first fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war, the, the potentials are potentials. They focus approaching events of the greatest magnitude. What exactly does this mean? Number one, we are living right in the time of the end. We are not at the end of the time, but we are in the period of the time of the end. What exactly that means is that we are now bound to face several problems as it, as it is happening now. And the judgments of God have started falling already, especially on the despisers of the truth. Now, Maranatha, page 174 says, Soon grievous troubles will arise among the nation, trouble that will not cease until Jesus comes. Right now we are on a crescendo. The problems that we are facing we will not cease. We will continue to get worse and worse and worse. So what then should we do as the children of God? That's what we're going to deal with later on. But now I want you to, uh, uh, I just want to draw your, your, your attention back to two presentations we've done. When we're talking about the coming crisis, when we're talking about the cost of living. Uh, since the last presentation on the cost of living, the situation has deteriorated. We understand precisely that Ukraine war has affected us all. We have made it clear in a present, on a presentation that, you know, even though the sanctions were put on Russia, but uh, the whole world is under sanction. And now we know for sure that the grain cannot move out of Ukraine. The sunflower oil cannot move out of Ukraine. The oil is not, uh, Russia is no longer importing, exporting its oil to many other countries. And because of this uh, economy embargo, there is a serious crisis in the world, especially in the Middle East, especially uh, above the sub-Saharan region in Africa, and also even in Southern Africa, all those who depend on Russian oil, they're in problems. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, the grain from Ukraine feeds the whole world. So many people are in serious problem. Many countries have a serious problem. But as for this presentation, I want to draw you back to what we discussed, uh, focusing on England. If you remember, uh, in uh, I think it was in January or Feb February, we actually went into this. In fact, it was in January. We looked at this paper uh, from Independent. The headline was, say, cost of living catastrophe looms in 2022. By the way, now we are in 2022. The question is, what has happened? We focused on this paper which was published on the 20th of uh, March 2022, uh, which was saying Ukraine war threatens to cause a global food crisis. Now, if you listen to what the United Nations is saying, if you listen to the forecast, we know for sure that we are heading to a very serious challenge. Now the question is, what exactly is causing this? They are saying that, you know, the Ukraine war has contributed a lot. The many countries have, are struggling to get enough food now. But I just want to focus primarily on this paper, which was uh, published on the 18th of May, 2022. Now listen to what the Al Jazeera say. They say, UK inflation hits 9%, highest since 1982, amid Russia-Ukraine war. So the UK economy, the UK uh, inf inflation has gone so high. Now, there are quite a lot of factors which uh, uh, they mention uh, in connection to this. They mention COVID. 
they mention Ukraine war and they also talk about Brexit as things that have caused this. But now listen, it says inflation in the United Kingdom surged last month to its highest annual rate in 40 years. Official data show piling pressure on the government to set up assistance for householding facing a worsening cost of living. You know, the challenge which we have in the UK is uh, many of us, we don't have uh, fields. Many of us, we don't have gardens. We depend on these big shops for our groceries, for our fruits, for our vegetables. So when inflation goes up, high up like this, it affects us greatly. Now it says UK, the UK now has the highest inflation rate of Europe's five biggest economies and almost certainly of the group of seven countries. Now the G7, they were the G8 before they removed Russia. In the G8, seven, UK so far has the highest inflation. Uh, Canada and Japan, they've not uh, submitted their, their figures yet, but they say neither is likely to match Britain's inflation level. So it actually means that, you know, Britain is no longer on the driving seat. They are actually sinking. Economy is going down. Inflation is going high. Things are becoming very difficult. It says soaring energy bills were the biggest inflation driver. Reflecting last month's increase in regulated energy tariffs, knock-on effect from Russia invasion of Ukraine mean those bills are likely to jump higher again in October. So we are not going to have a respite. It's going to be coming worse and worse and worse as we learn from the spiritual prophecy. But the question is, how is the UK government helping people? Now look at this uh, irony. In fact, look at you laugh at this. In the same paper, it says, while the government has said it is now, it now has a 22 billion pounds, uh, 22 billion pounds package of support for households, much of this is cancelled out by the effect of recent in tax increase on workers. You know, the middle class is being squeezed greatly. The taxes have gone very high. I'll just give an example. They are averagely in the middle class, people are taxed about 900 pounds, averagely 900. That's the average tax every month. And then they promise that they are going to give you 650. When actually, it's like, I'll give this simple uh, example. They take 100 pounds from you and they say to help you to cope with your bills, we'll give you 10 pounds. So it's not helping at all. This thing does not work. I'll prove that shortly. And then now it says uh, this was uh, the Guardian, uh, which was uh, 26, which was yesterday. It says, announcing the measure of, uh, on Thursday in a bruising week of the government, the councillor said, uh, said his sig significant set of inventions. So he, he said in his significant set of in, uh, inventions, what did he say? He said, we're going to give you 650 pounds pay off. This will just go to the 8 million people who are living below, probably, let me say, below the poverty line, who are living on benefits, who are living on social security, who cannot afford to look after themselves. So the bills have gone so high. Recently, they were given 200, uh, uh, they were promised 200, or they've been given 200 to help with the energy bills. Now there is an additional of that, but the question is, would that help? Now listen to the critics. The critic says, uh, this is still not enough. It's like you are sticking a plaster. It's not going to go a long way. It's just for a short term, but the problem is still there. What exactly is the government doing? The government is addressing the symptom of the problem, but they are not addressing the real problem. But I want to go to this, uh, to this, uh, uh, to the next paragraph. He says, uh, Rishi uh, Sunak's response to the cost of living crisis has received a mixed reception with charities and anti-poverty groups saying it provides temporary relief for millions of households but leaves those on the lowest income facing an uncertain future. So it's not going to help. What people need is substance. We are giving people, they are giving people one meal but one meal is not going to be enough. People want to have consistent, uh, consistent uh, supply of food, 
consistent supply of help. But the question is, is that the best thing? Is that the most ideal? What can we do as the children of God? Number one, what should we do as a people so that we can avoid the challenge that we are facing? Now listen uh, to this quotation, a crisis right upon us. Now in this crisis, we must now by the Holy Spirit, spirit power proclaim the great truth for these last days indeed these are the last days the crisis is getting worse things are not going to get better the places which we we used to admire so much i arrived in england some years ago long time time ago over 20 about 24 years ago things were so good Inflation was so low. You could live on a very small amount. But now, averagely, you need a very good amount for you to survive in England. And many times, many of us are not getting enough in terms of the income. So what should we do as the children of God? Number one, the world needs to know that things are not going to get better. We are on a roller coaster. Things are going to become worse and worse and worse. So what should we do as the children of God? We need to proclaim the everlasting message, warning people about the disaster that is looming. The real disaster is yet to come and is going to come shortly. We're going to deal with that in the coming few weeks as we'll be looking at the implementation of the National Sunday Law, as we'll be looking at where we are in the stages of the National Sunday Law. But let me take you to the book Maranatha, page 183, paragraph 2. The time is coming when we cannot sell at any price. The decree will soon go forth prohibiting men to buy or sell of any buy or sell of any man save him that has the mark of the beast. Now listen to the next part. He say in the last great conflict of the controversy with certain those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers they will be forbidden to buy and sell. Today you can buy, you can sell, as long as you have got some money in your pocket. But sooner or later, the money that is in your pocket will be controlled. The conditions will be set that you will not be able to buy and sell unless you can comply with the requirements. My brothers and sisters, as the children of God, when we see the danger coming, we can do something to help ourselves. Things are not going to get better. If we are hoping to depend solely on the government, sooner or later we'll receive the mark of the beast. Because we cannot go against what the government say when we depend upon the government or for social security. I know our situation is tough, I know our situation is difficult, but let's just be honest because that's what the, the word says. We need to work. We need to find alternative. We need to find solution. And now it says in the book, Country Living, page 10, paragraph 3, the work of the people of God is to prepare for the events of the future. My brothers and sisters, the future doesn't look good. The future is not bright. Things are going down. Things are going to be tough. It says we'll soon come upon them with blinding forces. In the world, gigantic monopolies will be formed. My brothers and sisters, this is such a serious statement. These gigantic monopolies today, Bill Gates is now controlling the pharmaceutical companies. He has invested over 10 billion in pharmaceutical companies and they listen to him. Bill Gates is still the same being who controls internet. Not only that, he is now in the food industry as well. My brothers and sisters, these gigantic monopolies are going to be formed and they have already been formed. If I time, I'll talk of the one who controls entertainment industry. We'll talk of the one who controls the social media industry. We are going to we'll talk about the one who controls uh, the, 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 news, the news. These things were prophesied long time ago, and this is what is happening in our eyes. The question, why are they doing this? It says, men will bind themselves together in union that will wrap them in the folds of the enemy, a few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business, and we will be slaves of those few men. Yes, we are now slaves of the system, is it? The government now has to look after us because we cannot afford to look after ourselves. We are not working. Many times there are no jobs. 
Many times we want to do something, but there is no place to do that. My brothers and sisters, we are facing a serious crisis. And in this serious crisis, we need to pray more. We need to earnestly pray. And to those who still have energy and strength, God leading you, it says in the book Adventist Home, where possible, it is the duty of parents to make homes in the country for their, for their children. And say, fathers and mothers who possess a piece of land in a comfortable home are kings and queens. My brothers and sisters, when you're in the countryside and you're able to produce your food, you choose what to eat. You choose the kind of vegetables to have. You have loads of them in your garden. You can have loads of grains and you can have loads of fruits. And you will choose what to eat, when to eat because you have got plenty. My brothers and sisters, I know the situation that we face in the cities today. We survive on Tesco value. We survive on that value food which costs very little, with no food value. The cheapest bread, the cheapest fruits, the cheapest rice, the cheapest pasta. And those things, some of them, have been refined greatly. They've got loads of sugars. They've got loads of oils. They've got loads of fat. They are very toxic to our health system. And that's what we can afford because we don't have money. But if you can, by God's grace, you still have strength, seriously consider producing for yourself. You will help yourself in terms of bills you can do good vegetables and good fruits, very healthy. And you control rather than being controlled. You will not depend on the government to look after you. When we depend on the government to look after us, my brothers and sisters, it will be very hard for us to resist the National Sunday Law. Because we are properties of the government. And all governments on the world will submit to the purpose soon. In fact, they've already submitted. So when you produce, we learn from the book Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19, he that tilled the land shall have plenty of bread. Oh, you have plenty of bread, my brothers and sisters, because you till the land. So God has called us to be producers, not buyers. God is not going to work a miracle when he has already given us what to do. All what we need to do is we need to use the opportunity that we have. You know, in England, we've been greatly privileged, is it? The country was like milk and honey. Everybody, one, everyone has been flocking to England for some time, from the Caribbean, from East Europe, from Africa. But things seem to be changing now. Yes, people still come to England. Oh yes, people still come to England. But my brothers and sisters, Starvation has come to England. Drought has come to England. The challenge has come to England. But the real starvation is coming. One day the door of mercy for England will be closed. You know what we have done in England. This land, the land of missionaries, we have despised their religion. We have despised the Bible. We have glorified in that which is evil. And we've disregarded the principle. For that reason, my brothers and sisters, drought is going to come to England. Starvation will come to England. The Bible says in the book of uh, Amos chapter 8, verse 11, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine for bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Right now we are in a famine. We are approaching a famine. There is no food, there is no money, things are hard, things are challenging. But my brothers and sisters, the real famine is come, coming when there will not be an opportunity to hear the word of God. Today, the word of God is preached over the internet. It's preached in the newspapers. 
is preached over the radio. Everywhere you go, there is the word of God, but unfortunately we are despising it. As we are despising it, one day it will be too late when the real famine has come. Verse 13, 12 says, And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and from to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find. Yes, we can get relief today from the government, is it? But as for this, as for the gospel, there will not be any relief because Jesus would have left the most holy place. There will not be any more pardon. We would have wasted our time. The time will be up. My brothers and sisters, we learn from the book Maranatha, page 271. Those who had not prized God's word were hurrying to and from, wandering from sea to sea and from the north to the east to seek the word of the Lord. They have not prized it. Why did they not prize it? They've been looking for money, is it? Chasing one shift after another. I've worked so hard in England at some point, doing three jobs one day, chasing shifts, chasing money, counting your dollars, counting your pounds before you work them. That's what many of us are doing today. We don't even know the door of the church anymore. We don't have time to go to church. Neither do we have time to kneel down and pray with our families because we are hurrying to acquire wealth again. Unfortunately, one day all these things will come to nothing. Say the angel, they shall not find it. There is famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. What would they not give for one word of approval from God? Sooner or later, we realize that all our silver, all our gold is of no value. We realize that all those houses that we've built for ourselves have no value. We realize that we cannot compensate the time that we've lost when we've been acquiring riches, think that, thinking that those riches can help us. We realize that, you know, we positioned ourselves where we thought was the best position in the world, yet we've made ourselves vulnerable to the enemy, and for that reason we've lost our lives. My brothers and sisters, starvation is coming and is coming to England greatly because we have rejected, we have refused the word of the Lord. Not only the salvation will come to England, but salvation will come to the entire world because at one time, God will close the door of mercy for everyone. We learn from the book, early writings, day after day, have been slighted, day after day, have they slighted salvation prizing earthly riches and earthly pleasure higher than any heavenly treasure or inducement. They have rejected Christ and despised his saints. They, they, filthy, they filthy must remain filthy forever. So they will remain filthy forever. When they, when they had time to look for God, they looked for silver and gold. When they had time to make a decision for Christ, they decided to forsake him. My brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that will not found in that group that will cry when the door of mercy is closed. For Hosea chapter 5 verse 6 says, They shall go with their flock, their flock and with their heads to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He has withdrawn from himself. He has withdrawn himself from them. My brothers and sisters, Everything that will hold on, we are going to lose it. All those monies in the banks will come to nothing. All those things that we are keeping under our pillows will come to nothing. All that we give away for the gospel will keep. All that we give away for the salvation of others will keep. But all those things that we are going to keep, one day when the door of mercy will try to give them away, but it will be too late, nobody will accept them. Therefore, it is now time to give for the gospel. It is now time for sacrifice for Jesus. It is now time to do all that we can do when the door of mercy is open because one day it will be too late. Maranatha, page 264, paragraph 4 says, The Lord in judgment will at the close of time will walk through the earth. The fearful plagues will begin to fall. Then those who have despised God's word, those who have lightly esteemed it, shall wander from sea to sea and from 
the north even to the east. They shall run to and from to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. My brothers and sisters, it is because there is time for everything. The ministers of God will have done their last work, offered their last prayers and shed their last bitter tear for a rebellious church and an ungodly people. Yes, we can despise God today, but day one day our time will be up. We can say all that we can say today, but starvation is coming. We can do all those things that we can do today, but the door of mercy will shut very soon. Page 271, book, uh, paragraph 2 in Maranatha said, And as mercy's sweet voice died away, fear and horror seized the wicked. With terrible distinctness, they heard their words too late. They heard the words too late. Too late. This is on the sixth plague. As the plagues will be raining, the wicked will know that they've wasted the time. They will know that indeed it is too late. My brothers and sisters, the solution for the drought and starvation that we are facing in the city is to produce our own food if God gives us strength and power. But my brothers and sisters, the solution to the starvation of the word of God, which humanity will face when the door of mercy is shut, is found today in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. The Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he is near. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous men his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Today, God can still be found. Today, there's still an opportunity. Today, there's still time that we can hear the voice of God and he can hear us. But one day, that time will not be. In Psalms chapter 95 from verse 6, the Bible says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God. There is only one God, my brothers and sisters. And we are the people of His pasture, this God of heaven, and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you hear His voice, my brothers and sisters, today, when we hear the voice of God, let us not harden our hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. What did they do in the wilderness? They murmured. What did they do in the wilderness? They hardened their hearts. What did they do in the wilderness? They all died in the wilderness except for Caleb, except for Joshua and Caleb who obeyed the voice of God. My brothers and sisters, things are hard. Things are difficult. Things are challenging and it's not going to be better. The West is about to hit us. The West is coming. And at this juncture, my brothers and sisters, God is warning us to make right decisions, to make right choices, to do the right thing. Where we are able to do, my brothers and sisters, God giving us power, let us respond to the call of God. But most importantly, God is calling us to make decisions to walk with him, to listen to him. And today, as you hear the voice of God, do not harden your hearts. Shall we pray? Dear Lord of mercy and compassion, starvation has come. They scramble for food because we cannot afford to buy that food that we want. But worst of all, real starvation is coming as the door of mercy will be shut. But as your children, dear Lord, may you help us to make our calling and election sure today, that our names may be written in the book of life, that when you shall come, Lord, we'll be ready to meet you. Pour your spirit upon us, we beseech you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord truly bless you. I will meet you in the next edition. In fact, we'll meet in the next edition, uh, which will be in a few hours' time. Until then, continue to be strong. If you have not subscribed to the Herald Report, please do so. I encourage you, please, to share the message. We have got uh, 
Uh, we, we, we are talking to people from all over the world who are very much interested in the present truth of our time. Please share the message with your family and we'll be saved, all of us, if we make a decision to follow Christ. Until then, continue to be strong in the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.